All right, so this is how I do a slip knot. Um, you have the end of your string, your thread here. Take two fingers, go around once, cross it in the back, go around again, so you're coming around towards the back. Hold, take my hook underneath, twist and pull off, tighten down. So then you have a slip knot. So that is the way that I make a slip knot. Let me try that again one more time, zoomed in and slow. Okay, so here is a slip knot slowed down. You have your yarn and a hook. Go around your fingers to the front, around again to the back, hold, under, pull through. All the while still holding those original two? Yep, so you don't let go. And then when you're ready to tighten it down on your hook, just pull both tail, both ends, and then you have your slip knot ready for crochet. All right, so next we're gonna do a chain. What we're gonna do is you're gonna take that slip knot that you just made and you're gonna set your hands up in a way that feels comfortable to you. I suggest starting it like this initially and then changing it to fit your preference. Now this is how a right-hander would crochet. A left-hander would do mirror image. I cannot teach you how to left-hand crochet. I have tried, I've just failed miserably at it. The funny thing is, is that a left-hander taught me to crochet. So she is an amazing crocheter, I am just so-so. But for the purpose of this video, I can teach you how to right-hand chain and crochet. So for the chain, you need a slip knot on your hook and you need to set your hand up and I suggest starting it like this. And the reason that we do that is we need enough tension on the yarn to keep your chain tight and your stitches even and also to pull yarn through your hands. So this you could consider a trigger finger, your um, pointer finger, you could consider it as a trigger finger and that is going to control all the tension in your project. And don't worry if initially, if your chains are kind of loosey-goosey, they probably should be a little loose to start because the looser your chain is, the easier it is, it is to learn to crochet into a chain. And it's very common for first-time crocheters to make very tight little chains, but then quickly you will realize that you cannot fit your hook back into those tight little chains when you go to crochet over top of the chain, which is how a crochet piece is worked. So, um, also, this is not going to be working in rounds. This is gonna be working in rows. Um, rounds is a different technique and I'll teach that later. So starting with your setup, you twine your yarn in your hands. And as you get better at crochet, you'll figure a way out that you like. This is just how I like to do it. Pull far enough away with your um, hook hand that you have some space in between your crochet hook and your trigger finger. Then you're going to take your hook and yarn under. That means you're going to take your hook under your yarn, not over your yarn. You yarn under. Now some patterns will call for you to yarn under or yarn over depending on the look that you're trying to achieve. But for this demonstration, we're yarning under. So take your hook under the yarn, which we call yarn under, and pull it through that loop, the slip knot loop that you made. That's one chain. So slowly again, yarn under, pull through. Yarn under, pull through. Yarn under, pull through. Yarn under, pull through. And you'll see that as I create this chain, I'm losing the ability to control up here at the hook because I'm holding down here on the very tail end of that slip knot. So I need to move my fingers up the chain. In the beginning, you'll do this very consciously, like you'll be aware that you're doing this, but the more you crochet, the less you'll even think about it. So I use a bunny ear method where I hold 
the project right here up at the hook and then I crochet about five or I chain about five and then I move my fingers up the hook up towards the hook and I don't even realize that I'm doing it um, but I think it's important that you realize that you're doing it initially so that you can control you can control the tension that's go happening here on the hook you'll also notice that the hook has this wide part right here that is so that you can slide your chain down the hook and widen it a little bit to make sure that you're keeping your chains nice and even. Eventually, it gets to the point where you don't really have to do this because you'll just know by looking at it. But when you're first starting out, it's not a bad idea to chain, slide down, chain, slide down, chain, slide down, even though it's kind of an extra step, it just helps that initial chain be very even without putting much effort into thinking about it. So let me slow that process way down once again. All right, so again, set your hand up. I would suggest some sort of method like this with the yarn always coming over your trigger finger. No matter how it's looped through these fingers, Keep your thumb out of the way, you're gonna need it. Keep these hand fingers out of the way, you're gonna need them to grab your project. Don't ever take your hands, don't ever take your right hand off your hook to try and pull loops over. A lot of my crochet students do that initially because they think it's easier and there is some truth to that. It is easier to chain using both your hands, but it's not good for crochet. You need one hand on the hook and one hand controlling the yarn. So resist the urge to use both hands to touch the yarn. Only keep one hand on the hook and one hand on the, the ball, the yarn ball. All right, so again, I'm setting up my hand. I have the slip knot on the hook. I'm yarning under, so I'm taking the hook under the yarn and I'm pulling it through the chain. I'm gonna do that one more time, moving my fingers up that chain, under, pull through. One more time, under, pull through. And you'll notice that I'm keeping tension here. I'm actually using these fingers to pull this down. So I'm not actually using this hand to do anything but pull the chain and control the tension here. Up the chain, yarn under, pull through, yarn under, pull through, yarn under, pull through. And now your pattern might tell you to chain 25 or 40 or however many it tells you to chain. To figure that out, turn your chain until you see the Vs and you can see mine right here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and one on the hook, seven. So I've so far chained seven. All right, and that is how you chain. All right, now that we've made a chain, this is 25, I want you to look at your chain and just twist it until you find the best view of where you can see those chains created. And for me, it's this view right here. And the reason that you wanna see your chain in the best view possible is because when you turn your work and start crocheting, because you haven't crocheted yet, you've only chained, you're going to crochet into each of those chains. So you need to be able to see the space in which you're putting the crochet hook. So for this demonstration, I'm using a very light colored yarn because it's easier to see through the little chain spaces. If you're just starting with crochet, I suggest starting with a large hook and light colored yarn. Um, smaller hooks will create smaller chains and darker colored yarns will create much harder to see spaces. So I always start my students with a large hook and light colored yarn. That being said, I'm going to show you how to turn your work and work a single crochet back into that chain. And most very basic patterns will call for that. As you get into more advanced patterns, it will call for front loop, 
back loop, middle loop. I'm just gonna be doing the top loop or the front loop for this demonstration, which will be this piece of yarn right here. So what that means is you're going to put your hook into the chain space, grab this after you yarn over, and that will be top loop only or front loop only. If your pattern called for a back loop or bottom loop, it would be this one here. And if it called for the middle loop, it would actually be the third strand on the back. And you'll be able to see that better once you get a row of single crochets in. It's really hard to see in a chain, but it's much easier to see with a single crochet. So for a single crochet, you're going to turn your work. So I, if I was gonna continue chaining, I would go like this, right? But I'm just gonna keep a loop here on the hook and I'm going to work back into this space right here. Does that make sense? So this is the top loop only. I'm going to take with this loop chain with this loop still on my hook. I'm going to take the crochet hook, put it into that space, yarn over, which means grabbing the yarn, pull through one, yarn over again, pull through two. That is a single crochet into a chain. The single crochet changes when you are working into um, a single crochet row, which I'll explain later. And this is also um, American crochet, which, or United States crochet. If you're in a different country, they might use um, British crochet, which is different. So this is American crochet. Be sure that when you read your pattern, you know what crochet you're using because the stitches are called the same thing, but they are not the same thing. So let's look at that one more time. We just went into that space there. So now we're gonna move the hook down the chain into the next chain space. So we're gonna put the hook here, go in, top loop only, yarn over, grab the yarn, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Again, move down the chain. Go through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. Again, move down the chain. Go through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. One more time. Go through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. So what you'll see happening here, this is a single crochet. Do you see the chain at the top of that single crochet pattern? When you turn your work to work back into the opposite row, you will be going into that chain if you're just doing a single crochet. There are different stitches that call for you to go around posts and to go through different stitch, stitch holes. And that's fine, but this is just a single crochet. So pay attention because what's most important is getting this foundational row correct. Getting this foundational row, row correct makes the second row much easier. Most of my students will find that they have no problem learning chaining it's this first row of single crochet that's an absolute beast. And then the second row of single crochet is very simple. A lot of it has to do with knowing how to hold your project right here at the needle, how to tension the yarn here. And I know that I'm making it look easy, but this has been a couple years of learning for me. Um, it's not easy when you're first beginning. So do not get discouraged and keep trying. We're gonna slow this video down. I'm gonna pull back these single crochets and I'm gonna try to do it as slow as possible. So this is called frogging. I'm just ripping back these single crochets to get to the end point of that chain. So here we are. Okay. Yes. All right, so this is the slowed down version to learn a single crochet into a chain. Remember this changes depending on the pattern, 
if it calls for you to pick up two loops or one loop, but in a chain, you typically only pick up one loop. So pay attention to your pattern and um, you're going to start with a loop on your hook. Take your hook, put it into that first chain space. See how there's a V right there? You're going to put your hook into that chain space, yarn over, which means grab the yarn by putting it over the hook, pull through one, go back, grab the yarn again, yarn over, pull through two. That's a single crochet. Move down the chain. Right there is the next chain space. This is why it's so crucial that you be able that you can see your chains. So if your chains are so small that you can't see them, or if your yarn is so dark that you can't see them, it's gonna be a much harder project. So move down the chain by inserting your hook into that chain space, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through both loops that are on your hook move down the chain. So I've crocheted into this chain, now into that chain, and now I'm moving into this chain here. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over again, pull through both. Move down the chain. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through both, move down the chain. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through both, move down the chain. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through both. And when you're very first beginning, sometime it is, sometimes it is helpful to say that out loud, especially if you're an audio learner, it's helpful to say the steps out loud. So I'm going to finish this chain and I will come back to you and show you how to single crochet into that first row because the steps may change depending on your pattern. Okay, so I have completed that row of single crochet. I am at the end of the row. Now, in order to turn this, so I'm working back to the left, if you're right-handed, you'll always be working to the left. And if you're left-handed, you'll always be working to the right. That's why it's difficult for a right-hander to teach a left-hander and vice versa, because your the direction that you're working in actually does matter. So to turn your work, you're going to chain one, just like you did down here, you're gonna chain one, rotate your work to the left, then you're going to find that chain, which is right there on top. If you can see it, it's right there. There's a chain right there. And now we're going to work into that chain. So this is where a pattern may call you to do top loop, back loop, bottom loop, middle loop, and the pattern will um, the pattern will let you know which loop you should be grabbing. And it does change the outcome of your final project as to which loop you grab. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I want you to grab both loops here. So you're going to put your crochet hook into this space that this chain has created, this space right here, and you're gonna grab both of those loops. So hook in, you've got three loops now on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Repeat the process by moving down the chain, and you can see that chain space right here or right there. I find it easier to look from the side, but some of my students do find it easier to look from the top. So insert hook. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Move down the chain. Insert the hook. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. 
yarn over, pull through two, move down the chain, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, move down the chain, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again, move down the chain, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. And you're gonna complete that all the way to the end of the chain. And when you get here, you'll chain one, turn your work to the left, and continue in the same direction back. If you do this 25 times, you get 25 rows, you'll have a square that's 25 by 25 stitches. I'm gonna slow down this video and attempt to show you that one more time. All right, so we're back here. I've pulled that row of single crochet and I'm gonna to try to slow this down and show you how to turn your work. So I'm at that very last single crochet in the row. I'm going to chain one. And the reason I chain one is to give myself some height when I turn my work to work back this way. If you don't, what you'll get is these round corners that don't necessarily line up with each other. So I've chained one, I'm turning my work to the left, I'm finding that first chain space, and I'm going to insert my hook into both of those chain spaces and pick them both up. So insert hook, I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. Next space, which is this space right here. Insert the hook, I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. Move down the chain. This is the next chain space. It's a little difficult to see right there. If I pull it apart, you can find it. It's right there. But it's easier to see if you turn your work sometimes and look at the top and then you'll see that V. So find the V, insert hook, grab both loops. You should have three loops on your hook now. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two again. Move down the line. Insert hook, three loops on hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two again. Move down the chain. Insert your hook, three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two again. And you will continue all the way just like that until you get to the end of this chain. You should have, when you finish, 25 chains on the top of that line. All right, so I've reached the end of that row of single crochet. And at this point, it might behoove you to put a stitch marker here if you use stitch markers or to go and count these chains to make sure that you're not short or long chains. So if I count my chains, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, let me start that over because I just lost it. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And then there's one on my hook, 24. So I must have another, oh, I do have another stitch down here, 25. So it is 25 across. So I have, um, I have 25. And when, you're, when you have a small piece like this, it's easy to see that you've reached the end. But once your piece gets longer, it's much harder to track. So some people like to use stitch markers. Some people like to use stitch counters. Some people just count. Some people just visually can look at their project and see that there's 25 there. Um, I kind of mix it up between both. I don't really use stitch markers all that often, but I'm not making very complicated things right now. So I hope that that helps. If you're ready now to turn your work, 
at that 25 at that 25th stitch what you're gonna do is you're gonna chain one chain one turn your work to the left and work back into each of these chains so if you turn your work you'll see that there is a line of chains right there easy enough to see and just like with that row with that second row that you just completed you're going to do that on your third row so you'll insert your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two again and you'll have your first single crochet of row three um, some handy tips and tricks that you might consider doing if you're first learning to crochet is practice with different handholds. Start with one, but practice to see if there's one that you like. Um, there are also rings that they make out there, tension rings. I don't use them, I just don't think you need to. Um, but in, if it is something that would help you, you can think about maybe investing in a tensioner ring. Um, and then also make sure that you're giving yourself plenty of space in between your yarn hand and your hook hand to maneuver the hook. Since I mainly teach younger children how to crochet, the thing that they find the most difficult is that they have small hands and so they're working very closely together with the yarn and the project and so it's difficult to keep their um, project and yarn separate. So one thing I teach them is to create space in between their yarn hand and their project hand. And I think that that's something that would have really helped me when I was first learning to crochet. So by creating space, I mean pull the yarn away a bit and reach over with your grabber fingers, your bunny ear fingers, and grab your project at your hook. So you should have enough yarn if you stretch your hand out, no matter how big or small your hand is, you should have enough yarn between your hook and your yarn hand that is the same space as the space that this sort of motion creates, if that makes sense. So take your grabber fingers, extend them all the way, position your hook so you can get your fingers right there at your hook. And this is the amount of space you should have to have correct tension while you're learning to crochet. And then once you get more comfortable, you can play with that and tweak it up. But that's just the basics of chaining and single crochet. I hope this video helped. All right. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking through how I do a magic circle or a magic loop. They're called different things, I suppose. Um, this is the easiest way that I found to do one. So, um, well, let's get into it. So essentially a magic circle or a magic loop or a magic ring is crochet over a slip knot. And it's, it's usually a single crochet over a very large slip knot. And I'll show you what I mean by that here. So you're gonna take the tail of your yarn, you're gonna make bunny ears, and put your rabbit face grabber fingers down here. So bunny ears, rabbit grabber fingers, all right? Just like when you're making a slip knot, I wrap the yarn, I grab it here like this, wrap it around once, and then again around the back, so you create parallel lines here and an X on the back. So one more time, grab it with your bunny ear fingers, around the top of the fingers, around the back of the fingers, and then I take this piece of the yarn and I tuck it in between my pinky and my ring finger. And because I wear a silicone ring, I have taken it off for this because the silicone will grab the yarn. So to complete the magic circle, you take your crochet hook, turn it upside down, insert it underneath that first string, grab the back string, pull it forward, twist. Bring your hook around, grab this string that's being held between your pinky and your ring finger, pull it through that loop, and you have created a chain. Now pull the whole project off your hand. 
Now you're going to take this and work this to the left. The tail and the loop are now considered your first chain. So you need to always make sure that you crochet to the left if you're right-handed or to the right if you're left-handed. I can't teach you how to do this left-handed. So I'm going to single crochet six, well, for this demonstration, probably eight. I'll single crochet eight times over top of the tail and the ring. So in through the loop, like it's a chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two. There's technically two loops right there. Yarn over, pull through two again. That's your first single crochet in your magic ring. Back into this chain. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. Back into the chain. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. And this can get pretty messy pretty quick because you're trying to hold the loop so it doesn't close. So at about this point, you can move your fingers down here to the chain and also hang on to the loop if you're finding that you're having a hard time controlling everything. So back into the chain, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. That's four, see, one, two, three, four. Back into the loop or the chain, yarn <clears throat> over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. That's five. One, two, three, four, five. Yarn into the chain, yarn over. And you may have to straighten this out, so don't worry if it's starting to look like a yarn booger right now. It will be fine. Pull through two, that's six. Back into that chain, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again, that's seven. And I'm gonna do it one more time back into that loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. All right, so I have eight single crochets in this loop. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold the project at the hook and I'm going to pull the tail and it will close into a circle. Kind of a messy circle, but a circle nonetheless. So there you go, there is a magic ring, magic loop, magic circle. So depending on what your particular pattern calls for, it will then tell you what to do next. For the purpose of this demonstration, in order to close this magic circle, I'm going to go into this chain here. Do you see how on the outside of the circle, a chain has been created? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hook and find the chain opposite of where it currently is, which is right here and I'm going to wiggle it into both of those loops, and this might be a little tricky, that's okay. There's one, just wiggle it, there's two, and now I'm going to single crochet to connect. You could also do a slip stitch to connect this and then end it if you wanted, but if you want to make it larger, you need to single crochet around the outside, including increased stitches, but that is a different video for a different time. So I'm just gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. And now that magic circle has been closed and I've created a ring. I'm going to slow this video down and zoom in and show you how to do that one more time. All right, so here is the magic circle, magic loop, magic ring, one more time, slowed down and zoomed in. <clears throat> And I wanted to point out, since I didn't point out in the last video, that you do not start this with a slip knot because your magic ring is a slip knot. So you just start with nothing. You start with your string. So make bunny ears, put your other three fingers together. Sorry, zoom that back in, please. Bunny ears. Your other three fingers are together. With these two fingers, grab the string, wrap it around your hand, your two fingers, your bunny ears, once to the front, once to the back, tuck 
in between your pinky and ring finger. So you should have an X on the bottom, parallel lines on the top, pinky and ring holding the project. Take your hook, slide it under, grab that back yarn, pull it forward, twist to get one loop on your hook. It is important you only do this one time, not two or three times, you just need one loop on your hook. Move your hand, come over, grab the yarn, yarn over, pull through that loop, and you've just created a chain. Pull the project off your fingers with the loop, the chain still on the hook. Find the tail, find the part of the project that has two strings. It's also very important that you crochet over top of the tail and the loop. If you miss either of these, your magic circle will not close. It will get stuck and create a knot. So turn your project, make sure it's go moving to the left, that the tail and the ring are facing to your left. Set your hand back up to crochet. Now put eight single crochets on top of those two strings. So pretend this is a chain, just a very large chain because it technically is. Insert your hook into the chain, in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two again. And let me slow that down a little bit. Insert the chain, insert into that chain. You ha should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. If this is getting unruly, move your fingers to the chain and, and try to tuck the chain and the loop into those grabber fingers. So something like this. Into the chain, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through again. That's three. Back into the chain. Yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two again, back into the chain, yarn over, pull through, again a little unruly so take the time to just stop and gather it, yarn over, <coughs> pull through two again, back into that chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. So now you'll see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to do two more, into the chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again, that's seven, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again, that's eight. Holding the chain that I've just created, that chain of single crochets there at the hook, and pulling this tail, I will close the magic circle like that. And I'm just gonna kind of like rotate it around so it looks a little nicer, there we go. It's closed. So now you can see on the outside of that magic circle is a chain and this is what you'll be working into to work into rounds. Almost all stuffed animals are worked into rounds. So if you're interested in, in working on stuffed animals, you need to know how to do the magic loop, magic ring, magic circle. In order to close this magic ring or magic circle, I'm going to do a single crochet into the next chain, which is this chain right here. You can also do a slip stitch depending on the look that you want. So I'm going to come in here, I'm gonna grab, I gotta wiggle it a little bit, grab those two loops of that first chain. I'm gonna show you a slip stitch. You're gonna pull through two, Yep, there we go, pull through two. And now you keep those two loops on your hook and pull that first back through. And that's a slip stitch. So now that circle is completed. And so now what I can do is I can go and single crochet on top of here and add. You can pack extra single crochets into each chain to make the circle wider and wider and wider, but just depending on what your pattern calls for. 
All right, so I hope that you have learned the magic ring.